Hello and welcome viewers and subscribers of AVG News. Olisi, the son of Nube is my name. And I hope I find you all uh, enjoying life wherever you are. Uh, it's a Monday today. I hope all of you had a wonderful weekend. And you've started off your week uh, in a good position or in a good mood. Uh, I want us to discuss the ongoing saga in the mainstream opposition in Zimbabwe, that is the Citizens Coalition for Change, which is led by Advocate Nelson Chamisa, as you already know, um, especially because many of you have been sending uh, us some questions uh, as to what is the most likely uh, outcome, especially after President Emerson Nangakwa last week went on to issue a statutory instrument uh, declaring um, his intention for by-elections to be held in the constituencies where members of Triple C were recalled by a man claiming to be the interim secretary general of the party, that is Misty Sengezo Chabang. So for those who are not uh, up to date with what is happening, uh, what happened is that after Chabang recalled members of the Citizens Coalition for Change, um, Nangakwa then went on to issue a statutory instrument in which he declared the 7th of November as the day on which the nomination court will sit to process uh, applications or rather to process the papers of those candidates who will seek to run or to contest the by-election and then he said also the 9th of December uh, this year as the date on which the by-elections will be held. You will remember that after recalls uh, of party uh, representatives in parliament the president has to declare within two weeks uh, the dates of the nomination court and the by-election. So in line with that law, the president who has been informed by the Speaker of Parliament of the recalls, uh, I think he was told or informed by the Speaker of Parliament you know, on the 9th uh, of this month, that is October, uh, that there have been vacancies in certain positions that were held by members of parliament representing the citizens coalition for change so he has then gone on in line with the law to declare the date of the nomination court and the date of the by-elections so what is going to happen because more many of you have then been asking us after we reported this last week uh, as to what is likely to happen going forward especially looking at the issue of uh, the internal disagreements within the, the triple C with Sengezo Chabang claiming that he is the interim secretary general of the party while the other members including Nelson Chamisa himself uh, are saying that he is not what he claims to be they have tried to claim that they don't know him they have tried to claim that uh, he was not a member of triple C but uh, there seems to be many who within the party was saying that no, 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 Chabang is a member of Triple C, has always been a member of Triple C, and that uh, the claim that he is not a member of the party are white of the mark, although there is a contestation as to whether indeed he is the interim secretary general, because you will know, as we have said before, that Triple C has not come out publicly to say that they have the position of a secretary general or whether interim or substantive. Uh, as it were, they are only saying that Nelson Chamisa is the president. They are saying that uh, Gift Ostalo Siziba is the deputy spokesperson and um, uh, Promise Mkwananzi is the national spokesperson after he replaced uh, advocate Fatsai Mahere just after the elections that were held on the 23rd of August. But now, as we have said also before, uh, when a party notifies the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission of its existence, you will remember that in Zimbabwe, political parties do not need to register per se, but they need to inform 
after their formation the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission which is the body that runs the elections in the country of their existence so how do they do this uh, the party sends it can do by writing a, an email or visiting the Zimbabwean Electoral Commission offices but now there are requirements in that notification the party has to furnish the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission uh, with the constitution that the party uses and we are told in this instance that Triple uh, C submitted an edited version of the MTC Alliance constitution but with a change in that they patented uh, the party in the name of Nelson Chamiso, which makes it some sort of uh, a, a possession of Nelson Chamisa, we are yet to read fully uh, that constitution because somebody has promised, somebody from within the party has promised to furnish us with the same constitution that was sent with uh, some little editing to the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission. And then they are saying that, now, they are saying that it was edited and Chamisa is in a way the owner of the party uh, but the rest of the information uh, of the information that is included there the rest of the details that are there uh, are that it is um, a bastardized mdc alliance constitution which then leaves nelson chamisa with a lot uh, of um, negatives on his side because the way the mdc alliance uh, has to select its leadership is based on a congress but we'll get to that uh, and then the other thing that the party has to furnish the zimbabwe electoral commission with other than the constitution are names of three officials of the party uh, whose names must also have against them the contact details and addresses of those officials usually is the party president the party secretary general and the party treasurer general or whatever they call the person who is in charge of their treasury so we don't know as of yes as of yet as to whether uh, in that notification to the zimbabwean electoral commission uh, mr sengezo chavamo's name was submitted uh, to represent the secretary general and if indeed it was submitted then it means that he now has a serious case uh, on his side then the party also has to supply the zimbabwe electoral commission with its logos uh, and party colors you'll remember that there are certain symbols which cannot be used uh, in politics in zimbabwe that is for example any picture of the big five animals in the country uh, so that is your elephant your lion and the others and you also uh, in the last that we had cannot use uh, any symbol that is being used by a, a, a government body or a parastatal like maybe uh, the, the 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 hawk that is being used by the zimbabwe support unit that is the police reactionary uh, that is the police reactionary group uh, you cannot use also any uh, of the symbols that are used by the zimbabwe national parks or any other state body so that's why you need to supply or to provide the party symbols to the zimbabwe electoral commission for use uh when the they, they hold elections to then uh design the ballot paper uh they also want to make sure that the name that you are submitting is not a name that's already been taken up so it has to be a name that is already existing i mean that is uh, i mean um vacant that is not existing for any political party that is in existence so you cannot use a name that is already there you cannot use a symbol that has already been used by another party and you cannot use any symbol that is in zimbabwe outlawed for political parties as i have said like your big five uh, animals then they also need you to inform them so that Zek can include you in their political party pro parties program that is maybe there is an outreach there is something that they want to inform political parties there is dialogue that they are um, holding with political parties so that is why they need this uh, information for you so we don't know 
uh, as I've said, if Triple C have the name of Sengezo Chabangu as their Secretary General, whether on an interim or substantive basis. But what we have heard from Chabangu himself, he seems to be having a lot of confidence in his acclaimed position uh, or in his claimed position as the Secretary General on an interim basis of the Citizens Coalition for Change. And he has been challenging those who are claiming that he is not a member of the party to come forward and meet him in court. And he is saying that he is going to embarrass them, which means that he has got a lot going on on his side uh, in the claim that he is making. And he is also challenging Nelson Chamisa himself to prove that he is the party president or he is a member of the party because you would hear uh, a number of people claiming that Chabang is not, not only is he not the Secretary General uh, of MTC, but of Triple C rather, uh, but he is uh, a former member of the MTCT and a former member of the PDP. He has never been a member of the Triple C. But now here is a challenge. Triple C does not have any membership books. It doesn't have uh, any membership cards uh, where people would sign up and then be given cards. Triple C doesn't have any cards and it claims that it is a movement uh, which accepts every Zimbabwean in which uh, every citizen of Zimbabwe by virtue of being a citizen becomes a member. But besides, then that makes Chabangu a member of the party but also uh, it also makes me the mem a member of the party. Uh, and then there is also um, a number of things that belie the claims by Nelson Chamisa and his uh, cronies that Chabang is not a member. That is photographs that have been taken with between, I mean, that have been taken by Nelson Chamisa and Chabang together. And we are told that that was the time they were planning uh, the formation of Triple C. You will remember that Chabang is a former member of the MDCT or former chairperson for Matebelele North uh, of the party. And this means that when the party moved or when Nelson Chamisa formed Triple C, Chabang has always been around and uh, following behind him. And this is, that, this is the claim that we are getting that Chabang has been following every mutation of the MDCT. So it is a lie by Nelson Chamisa and those who follow him that uh, or those who support him that Chabang has never been a member of the party. You remember that Chami Chamisa claimed before that he has never seen uh, the guy, that he has never known the guy, but it seems that was a lie uh, which they were trying to use to trash Chabang, but he seems to be prepared. He, he seems to have come prepared. He's got all the uh, he's got the photographs as proof. He's got himself wearing uh, triple C colors uh, in a rally that was addressed by Nelson Misa in Bulawa. So the claim that he is not a member of the party falls away first on that basis, but also on the basis that they have been claiming that the party belongs to every. Zimbabwean. Now this ne then takes us to the next step. What is the next step uh, on the by-elections that are going to be held? Now what is going to happen is we hear that there are uh, some members of Triple C led by Prince Dubego Sibanda, that is the MP for one of the Binga constituencies and he is taking this matter to court, he's taking the recalls to court uh, so that this matter can be circled by legal means and now uh, he's claiming that that is Prince Tuvego and the others are claiming that Chabangu is not an interim uh, secretary general of the party and therefore doesn't have the local stand I to recall any member of the party but you would also know that advocate uh, Jacob Mudenda who is the speaker of parliament and a member of ZANU PF uh, has already seen that letter and acted on it uh, that was written by Chabang recalling certain people because he says they've ceased to be members of Triple C and we are of the opinion that Mudenda would not have just rushed into recalling these people uh, unless and until he was convinced there was something convincing that number one Chabang is the interim secretary general of Triple C uh, 
uh, may be based on the documents that were submitted by the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission or the documents that were submitted by Triple C to the Speaker of Parliament themselves. We are told also that Triple C has written to the Speaker of Parliament uh, trying to reverse these recalls, but the Speaker is adamant that Chabamu's letter holds water and therefore is acted on it and we know that Mutenda is a lawyer himself so he could have taken this into consideration as all the legal implications but of course there's a lot of uh, political brinkmanship happening between Triple C and ZANU PF and we will see where this takes us but now going forward to the proclamation of the dates of first the nomination court sitting and the by-elections this can be set aside uh, the president had no other choice but to follow the law to proclaim these dates uh, within the two weeks uh, legal uh, requirement. But it doesn't mean that these elections are going to go ahead if the court uh, is still yet to determine the validity uh, of the claims that Chabang is making and the counterclaims that are being made by the likes of Prince Duwego and others. So what we are going to see is whether or not the court is going to sit and reverse the recalls or the court is then going to uh, allow these by-elections. But before then, the court has to uh, first and of all determine because this is obviously an internal uh, party fight within Triple C. Let us state that unless and until it is proven that ZANU-PF has got a hand in that. Uh, right now, we don't have such proof. All proof that we have points to internal fissures within Triple C. So the court has to determine as to whether or not Chabang uh, has, uh, he is what he claims to be. If he indeed is, then the recalls, were they are based on any decision taken by the party? Because by merely being the secretary general of the party, you don't wake up tomorrow and start recalling people unless and until there has been a sitting uh, of the party's uh, maybe a, a structure responsible for taking such decisions. And that can only be proved by minutes of such a meeting, uh, taking resolutions that certain and certain members have to be recalled and it has to be signed. And those minutes have to be validated by the structures within those structures that are responsible for doing that. And that must be based on the constitution of the party. If it indeed has such a provision, then it will mean that, uh, and if Chabangu has these minutes, uh, it means that then the recalls will have to proceed. But also, if there's been no such, the battle will then move on to who is the right person to issue recalls of party members is it nelson chamisa is it chabangu is there a structure responsible for that did that structure uh, do that if there is no structure as triple c is claiming then that will give us a, a new precedent that is going to be set as to how it uh, how to deal with a party that doesn't have any structures because if you don't have any structures it means you are all equal in the party and anybody can just wake up and do certain things uh, according to how they feel and it will take uh, some doing by the court to determine then whether or not these recalls can go ahead and if not uh, can they be reversed so if they go ahead, it means that these people are going to be recalled and there will be by-elections in Zimbabwe on the um, 9th of December as already has been proclaimed by the president. But if the case drags beyond that, it means that these were going to be um, pushed further or they were going to be shelved depending on what the court decides. Uh, and then what also we know uh, is that there has been simmering uh, fights within Triple C and this fight didn't start with Chabang recalling certain people. Uh, what we are told is that uh, Nelson Chamisa after having declared that the party was going to choose his candidates based on the will of the people of a respective constituency turned around and he beat uh, and he he betrayed the trust of his party's members, especially those in certain provinces, especially Bulawayo and Matebeleland provinces, where, and Harare as well, where members of the party were supposed to, they supposed to be a nomination team within the party. Let's say in Bulawayo, they were supposed in each constituency be a nomination team that nominates candidates 
uh, more than one candidate who are then supposed to appear before uh, some people, some constituents uh, in that particular constituents, maybe in a hall, and then they're supposed to, uh, they were supposed to then read out their manifestos, convince the people that they are the right person for that particular position, and then the people then vote. They are their chosen candidates based on the manifesto that each candidate reads out based on the presentation that is given by each candidate. But now, when these names were selected uh, in certain places, there were four people, uh, in others there were three, five in others, this uh, appearance before the constituents didn't happen. And Chamisa instead appointed his own favorite people to certain constituencies. And the other claim is that in areas like Bulawa, as Savchabang is already saying, uh, some people were not known in that particular area, were then imported by Nelson Chamisa himself. The claims uh, that we are getting uh, are that these uh, people were nominating candidates, were demanding bribes from certain people, and you, you paid a bribe that is higher than everybody else. Uh, you are then uh, submitted uh, as the candidate to Nelson Chamisa, and then Chamisa handpicks based on what his closest allies would have told him. But there are certain areas where we are told that he submitted names, or he chose his own people, uh, sidelining others whom he wasn't seeing eye to eye with, and the names that were getting of people that were sidelined uh, are the names of people like uh, Mr. Tendai BT, Mr. Welshman Nube, uh, and others, Professor Welshman Nube, that is, and others uh, that he sidelined. People like Tozani Kupe, because what we are told, the allegations that are happening, is that Chamisa ditched some of his closest lieutenants and decided to work with members of the Zimbabwe National Army, who were then the ones that were directing proceedings uh, in the party. We are yet to interview a number of people, but what we're getting are uh, worrying claims that Nelson Chamisa has been working instead of his closest ally, or, or instead of those that have been in Triple C for a very long time. He has been working with members of ZANU PF and members of the Zimbabwe National Army with belief that the Zimbabwean army will support him to take over power if he wins the elections. So we are still investigating that and we are still and we are promising to come up with a detailed report on that because we are getting these claims and doing interviews with certain numbers uh, of people who are members of Triple C and they are saying that as a result of that uh, Chabang then working with certain people that is working with that are senior members of the party did not start today to try and counter Nelson Chamisa's importation of candidates. But there is proof that Chabang, when Chamisa had uh, announced his candidates, Chabang spent the whole day traveling all over Matebeleland to in contact with some uh, residents or citizens of those particular areas. Uh, for example, you would go to a constituency, let's say in Luvepe, and say, this is among the people that were chosen, this is a bona fide member of this constituency and therefore cannot be expected to take a back step uh, while a person who has been imported or somebody who is just a crony of powers that be is uh, elevated to a position of party candidature and you would then bring forward another person who is a bona fide uh, person uh, resident of that particular place that is why there are claims that he was busy signing for uh, a double candidates in fact where he came up with double double candidates he was countering people who had been parachuted to those positions just because they were favorites with Nelson Chamisa, they had bribed certain people, they had bribed even Chamisa himself and you wanted to sideline them. So we didn't start, uh, these, these, fish, these fishers didn't start today uh, after the, the elections but indeed started before the elections and Chabang was countering that and he has the support of some senior members of the party some of them have been there for a very long time and we expect these people to then come out uh, in the open when this case is taken to court because daggers are drawn against uh, advocate nelson chamisa on the basis that there are accusations that he's working with zanu pf he's working with 
members of the Zimbabwe National Army with the belief that they're going to elevate him to a position of power. So members of Triple C are saying that he is throwing away party principles, party ethos, party ideology in favor of him getting into power. And they're saying that they will not allow these things to happen because they have fought so much for this party. They have risked their lives for this party. And we are told that a number of party members are not happy that Nelson Chamisa has sort of betrayed uh, Job Sikala, whom you know has been in jail for close to 500 days now. And they are saying that Chamisa doesn't care about him because he has been told by these members of the military that Sikala is not the right person uh, to be among the leaders of Triple C because he's too radical, because he doesn't uh, seem to be uh, somebody who can work with the military because they want to work uh, with Triple C. But we're told that all this uh, is only meant for the military to control both the ZANU PF and the opposition. But we are still investigating this. We'll come forward when the investigation co is complete and we are going to issue uh, we're going to uh, publish this story because it seems to be digging deep into what is actually happening within triple c and what is actually happening within the opposition space uh, in zimbabwe so this is what we have then going forward again to the by-elections the likely scenarios are that if chamisa loses uh the the ownership of the party you will have very little time to come up with a new party before the by-elections. If this case drags beyond uh, the date of the by-elections, but the court declares that the by-elections can go ahead pending the finalization of who owns Triple C, then we are likely to have members of Triple C uh, having to find somebody else to sign for them. We don't know if it's Chamisa who is going to sign for them or is Chabang going to sign for them until the... Uh, I mean... Uh, before or pending the finalization of the court case, in which case, if somebody else signs for these candidates and the case is not resolved with the power that already Chabang has been given by the Speaker of Parliament, we are likely to see him recalling again those that have been uh, that have won the by-elections. The other uh, possibility is that Chamisa can then ask his supporters or those that have been recalled to stand as. Uh, independent candidates and in the cities once he says that and he campaigns for them they are likely to win those constituencies as independents but now the danger is that once those people have been elected into parliament into councils as independents there is no way that Chamisa will be able to control them because they will be there representing themselves and their constituents and nobody can recall them so which means that Chamisa will have lost uh, the case again you would have lost the battle so we don't know how triple c is going to maneuver around this one unless and until the case has been settled in court and the actual leader of the party the bona fide leader of the party has been declared by the courts but we await uh, with keen uh, interest what is going to happen but if you are legally savvy and you want to be part of the discussions you can contact us via the comment section uh, underneath this video or you can whatsapp us on 073-962-3075 that is a south african number plus 27-73-962-3075 don't call us just send us whatsapp messages as i have said also we are investigating the influence of the zimbabwean military in the goings on in triple c you know that the military already controls zanu pf they are in charge of zanu pf if they wake up tomorrow and say so and so cannot uh, continue to be president of the party the military has that power we saw that uh, when they took out robert mugabe who was the president of the party they took him out of zanu pf a few weeks after they had declared, after the structures had declared that uh, Emerson Nangako must be expelled from the party, Robert Mugabe is the candidate of the party going into the elections. But we saw them, the military, changing course, taking out Robert Mugabe from state power and uh, micromanaging the party members into voting back Emerson Nangako as party president and 
retiring Robert Mugabe as well as expelling certain members of the party who were very strong uh, before the expulsion of Emerson Nangakwa. And we saw a lot of things being reversed within ZANU-PF as to uh, the demands of the military. So this is what we are getting that they are now also in charge of the opposition not per se but they are in charge of nelson chamisa as the leader of the opposition so we are told the claims are that the military has captured the opposition leader the mainstream opposition leader nelson chamisa who you will also know that his power hunger has left him listening to nobody else except those who want to power him into state power, who want to keep him uh, in the party presidency. So this is what we have. It's a very worrying uh, scenario, but we are still investigating this. We are getting uh, indications that this might be true, but we are not certain yet and would want to come here and make certain claims which then will be proven to be false. So we are still investigating this. If you have any evidence pointing to either for the argument or against the argument, just get in touch again via that WhatsApp number that we have given. I will repeat it. It's plus 27739623075. Plus 27739623075. Thank you very much. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like this video, share it, but also participate in the argument. Thank you very much.